Hello, my name is Taylor Ross. I'm an Eximetry Ambassador and the owner of Frustum Virtual in Los Angeles, California. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to set up Eximetry I. Eximetry I is an application developed for smartphones to be used for various virtual production functions. Some of the functions that Eximetry I can be used for are camera device, camera, talent, or object tracking, and a preview monitor. There's some documentation on Eximetry.com that will guide you through this process. There will be a link to this documentation in the description of this video, or you can just follow along to see how to set this up in real time. The first step in this process is making sure that you've downloaded and installed the Eximetry I app to your smartphone. The fastest way to install this application is to go to Eximetry.com on your smartphone, find the link that highlights Eximetry I, experiment with real-time virtual production on your mobile phone. Once you click on this link, it will take you through the entire process of installing this application on your smartphone. Eximetry I is currently released as a public beta, and it is only available for iOS devices. In order to test the public beta version of this application, the installation of TestFlight is required on your iOS device. There is also a link in the documentation. This link will also be included in the description of this video. Once you have Eximetry I installed on your iOS device, the next step is to set up a static IP address. I will be setting up a static IP address on my Windows system. This is for Windows 10. Navigate to the Windows icon in the lower left-hand corner and type in Command Prompt. Double-click on Command Prompt to open a new Command Prompt window. In this Command Prompt window, type in ipconfig and select Enter on the keyboard. This will show us the IPv4 address, subnet mask, and default gateway of the network that we're currently connected to. For me, it's a Wi-Fi network. The main setting that we're looking at in this command prompt window is the default gateway. When we're setting up a static IP address on our system, we will need the default gateway information. Once my iPhone is connected with a long ethernet cable, it will also populate this command prompt window. Eximetry I will also work wirelessly by inputting the IPv4 address of our Wi-Fi network. But for a much more stable connection, you can connect your iPhone using an Ethernet adapter and an Ethernet cable. For easy access to the default gateway information, I will just minimize my command prompt. Now that we have our default gateway information, I'll select the window in the lower left hand corner. I'll type in control panel, double click on control panel to open it, find network and internet and select it. Next, select network and sharing center. Now that we're in the network and sharing center, we need to connect our iPhone directly to the computer using the Ethernet cable. I have an Ethernet adapter. So I will just plug that into the bottom of my phone. Once my computer recognizes that this connection has been made, I will see that a new unidentified network pops up in my active network section. Once this connection is fully established, you will see that I have an active network, Ethernet 2. This is the port that the Ethernet cable is connected to on my computer. In order to change the settings of this Ethernet 2 port, I will select it. Next, find Properties and select it. Now in the Ethernet 2 Properties, we're looking for Internet Protocol Version 4, IPv4. Go ahead and select IPv4 and then select Properties. By default, this will be on Obtain an IP Address automatically. In order to set up a static IP address, you need to select Use the following IP address. For the IP address, I will input the first three sets of digits. For the last three digits, you can use any number from 1 to 255. I usually set this to 100. Just make sure that whatever IP address you decide to use isn't currently in use by any other device on your network. Once we input an IP address, we can just click, and it should auto-populate the subnet mask. For the default gateway setting, we're going to navigate back to our command prompt. I'm just going to copy the default gateway from my Wi-Fi network. I will just select it using my mouse and then hit Control C on my keyboard to copy it. Now back in my IPv4 properties, I will paste this into the default gateway. With my default gateway set, I will close the command prompt. Now that I've input all the properties for my static IP address, I will just select OK. You may also see this warning, you can just select Yes. With that, we should now have a static IP address set on our Ethernet 2. We can just close the Ethernet 2 properties. We can also close the Ethernet 2 status. We can now exit out of our control panel. We also need to set up a static IP address on our smartphone. I will just navigate to the settings of my smartphone. You should see a setting labeled Ethernet in your iPhone settings. Go ahead and select it. On the interfaces page, I have a USB 10 100 LAN. I will select this to access the settings. Now for the IPv4 address, I have configure IP set to manual. Select this to access the settings. Make sure that you have manual selected, and then under manual IP, you will input another static IP address for your smartphone. For the last two digits of this IP address, I've selected 99. 
Just make sure that this number isn't in use by any other device on your network. Now I select back in the upper left hand corner and I can close my smartphone settings. The last thing to mention is that you will need to have your smartphone connected to Wi-Fi as well as the static IP address through an ethernet cable. If Wi-Fi isn't enabled on your device, you may encounter several issues while running Eximetry I. Now that we have the static IP addresses set on our computer and our smartphone, we need to launch Eximetry DE Composer. I already have a project that I've created for this tutorial. In my Unreal Editor for Eximetry project, all I've done is add a tracked camera and cooked the project. Eximetry I will work with the tracked camera or mixed camera. I have separate tutorials covering the setup of the mixed camera and tracked camera to be used in Eximetry DE Composer. Be sure to watch those tutorials before continuing this tutorial. The information that I cover in those tutorials is a lot more detailed so it will show you every step in setting up your tracked or mixed camera compound with Eximetry DE Composer. The first page we see is the Video Outputs Devices page. This should look familiar to you if you've watched the other tutorials. For this tutorial, I will only be covering the setup of Eximetry I. On the left-hand side, I will navigate to the Device Mapper. Under Category with Video Selected, I will select Manage Devices. On the left-hand side of this Manage Devices, you will see an SRT under Video and a Video Out SRT. If this is your first time setting up Eximetry I, both of these will have nothing populated. If you've already tried to set up Eximetry I, you will see your iPhone in these settings. I've set up this project to mirror what it should look like if this is your first time setting up Eximetry I. I'll select Cancel to close the Manage Devices window. On the left-hand side, I'll navigate back to Video Outputs. Once Eximetry I is up and running on our cell phone, we will have another Video Output device. I will show you how to select this device once Eximetry is already running. Because this is the first time setting it up, it will not populate the Video Outputs Devices page when we launch Eximetry. Once we're happy with all the video output devices settings, we can just select start. Now we just need to wait for Eximetry to load our project. In this project, I've already added the tracked cam Unreal 3 cam to my compound. As I mentioned before, Eximetry I will work with any tracked cam or mixed cam compound. I've also brought in the project that I created and cooked in Unreal Editor for Eximetry. All of the pins have been connected between both of these nodes, so we're ready to go. Once Eximetry is running and our project has been loaded, we need to launch the Eximetry I application on the iPhone. Once the Eximetry I application opens, the first thing that you'll see is the Eximetry desktop address. This is where we'll input the static IP address that we created for our desktop. Once you input this IP address, you can just select OK. Now to launch the Eximetry I application, we will just select Connect at the bottom of the screen. The next page that we will see is called Connection Mode. Send Camera Stream will send the camera feed from the iPhone into the Eximetry PC. Send Tracking Data will use the iPhone as a tracking device. Receive Preview Stream will stream any video output of Eximetry to the iPhone. I will turn on all of the Connection Mode settings and then I will select Start at the bottom of the screen. In the upper left hand corner of the screen, you will see a gear. This will take us to the settings of Eximetry I. I will select this gear to open the settings. The first thing we see is device name. This is where you can specify a unique name for the device. This name is what you will see in Eximetry DE Composer. It will be used for the tracking and video device settings. Under camera, we will see send camera stream. If this is turned on, the application will send the video feed from the phone's camera. Next, you will see latency. You only have to change this value if the round trip time, RTT, is too long and the transmission is breaking up. With higher latency, there will be more time to recover lost packets. Next, we will see format. This is the resolution and frame rate that will be used for the video stream. You can experiment with whatever resolution and frame rate you'd like to select. iPhone only supports 30 or 60 frames per second. The next setting is bitrate. This is the video bitrate in megabits per second. Keep in mind that a wired connection will allow for a higher bitrate. Next, you'll see enable audio. If this setting is turned on, then audio from the phone will be sent alongside the video. Now in the tracking settings, we have send tracking data. If this is turned on, the phone will send its positional information. Next, we have show position data on UI. If this is turned on, the positional information will be visible on the top of the camera view. Next, we have our preview settings, receive preview stream. If this setting is turned on, the phone can receive the preview stream from Eximetry. The final setting we see under preview is bitrate. This is the video bitrate in megabits per second. This setting changes the bitrate of the Eximetry preview stream. This setting can also be modified in Eximetry under the manage devices video out SRT menu. Keep in mind that wherever you change the setting in Eximetry I or Eximetry Composer, 
the last change will apply to the bitrate. Now that I've covered all of the settings, I will select back in the upper left hand corner. In order to start streaming information from our phone to our Eximetry PC, we will need to select this circle on the right hand side of the screen. Because this is the first time connecting my iPhone to my computer, it will give me two warnings. I will just select OK on both of them. In order to fix the two warnings that we just saw, we need to navigate to the Inputs tab at the top of Eximetry DE Composer. Select Input 1. This will open the settings for Input 1 on the right hand side of the screen. I will quickly navigate to the Cameras tab at the top just to make sure that I have Camera 1 selected. Camera 1 is selected, so I will navigate back to the Inputs tab. Now in the Input 1 settings on the right hand side, we'll see Camera Device. We need to change this to the SRT iPhone 12 Pro. For the camera mode, I know that my resolution and frame rate are set to 1080 at 30 frames per second, but you can also set this to auto. Finally, for the tracking device setting, I will change this to Eximetry I iPhone 12 Pro. Now that all my input one settings have been set to the correct devices, I will navigate to edit in the upper left hand corner and then select preferences. Select rendering on the left hand side. This is where you can select the frame rate and frame size that Eximetry is rendering. Feel free to experiment with any of these frame sizes. I would recommend that you leave this at 1920 by 1080. The higher you set this resolution, the more it will impact your system's performance. While running Eximetry I, the iPhone can only handle so much before it starts to heat up. Just be cautious when setting your frame size because it will impact your overall performance. I will just leave this setting at 1920 by 1080. Now on the left hand side, navigate to HTTP control. Make sure that enable HTTP control is checked on. Once you're happy with your settings, you can just select apply and then OK. Now back on the iPhone, I will select the circle on the right hand side to stop the streaming. And then I will start the streaming again by selecting the circle again. This time on the iPhone, I only get one warning saying could not connect to preview stream. I will select OK and come back to my Eximetry PC to show you how to fix this. You can see in preview 1 and 2 that we're receiving the video feed from the iPhone. The last warning message that we got was saying that we were not receiving a preview stream on the iPhone. You can also see this in red in the messages. To fix this, we need to navigate to Edit, Video Outputs. This is the same as the Video Output Devices page that we saw when we launched Eximetry. At the bottom of this list, you can see that we now have a number 7 SRT iPhone 12 Pro. We just need to set this to Index 2. This is the same as Preview 2. You can now select Apply and OK. Now I will go back to my iPhone and start and stop the streaming once again. This time, once the streaming starts, you can see that I get no warning messages. I can use this icon to switch between my preview stream and my live camera feed. My iPhone is now receiving the video preview from Eximetry. The last step in this process is to set the origin of our input one. Back on the inputs page in Eximetry, you need to make sure that origin is selected. I will switch to studio so that you can see my live camera feed. In my preview one and two, you can see the Aruko marker that I placed at the center point of my camera tracking volume. This is also the zero point that I use to calibrate my studio. There will be a link in the description to this Aruko marker if you need it. There is also a link in the Eximetry documentation. With the Aruko marker in the view of my camera, I will select origin, and then I will navigate to detect origin on the right hand side and select trigger. This will move the zero point of my studio to the center of the Aruko marker. Remember that if I'm not explaining enough in this tutorial, this is because I'm only explaining how to set up Eximetry I. If you need help setting up your other input settings, you need to watch the other tutorials. Now that the zero point of my studio has been reset using the Aruko marker, I will navigate to monitor one and select final. At this point in the tutorial, you should be set up to use Eximetry I as your camera tracking device. I'm just gonna make one quick adjustment to the placement of my billboard. You don't really need to follow along for this section of the tutorial. With everything that we've covered, you should be ready to use Eximetry I. I'm just going to move my camera around a little bit to showcase what Eximetry I looks like when it's all running. You'll notice that sometimes there's some glitching and some weirdness that happens. You will most likely get better results than what you see here. I'm currently running Eximetry I as well as screen capturing on my iPhone, which is impacting the performance. You're obviously not going to get the same quality that you would get from a cinema camera and a dedicated tracking solution but this is a great tool for a director's viewfinder. I wouldn't recommend using only this for a full-scale production, but I will say that it's very impressive that you can get this tracking quality and this many functions out of just an iPhone. In my opinion, this is still better than the HTC Vive, but if you're going into a full-scale production, I would recommend using something like anti-latency and a real cinema camera because the reliability and quality that you will get will be something that you can actually deliver.
I'm sure that this will get better in time, and some people will be able to make some really cool productions happen with just this technology, but also keep in mind that this is still in beta. With all of that out of the way, I will quickly show you what the camera build for this tutorial looks like. I have a small rig cage, an iPhone cooler, an external battery. I also have an ethernet cable adapter for the iPhone. There will be links in the description to all of this gear. The only thing from this build that is an actual necessity is that iPhone cooler that's attached to the back. Running all of this technology on an iPhone will make it heat up really quickly, which will affect the performance. And long term, I'm sure it would also affect the actual hardware of the iPhone itself. Hopefully this video was helpful in getting you set up with Eximetry Eye. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos, and thanks for watching.